Hey everyone, Chris Brown here. I'm fortunate to be joined by uh, Dr. Jason Wolmuth, the Director of Complex PCI and Coronary Interventions for the Providence Heart Institute at St. Vincent's in Providence, Portland. Uh, he's here to talk with us today about a new technique that he and some colleagues developed uh, called side closure. Jason, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Chris. Hey, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be with you guys today and uh, excited to kind of share this uh, cool technique that a colleague of mine and I uh, uh, published uh, recently. So this is a, a, a problem that has kind of plagued me for, I don't know, the last eight or nine years since I've been using impellas uh, to support patients. And, and the issue uh, really is, um, you know, when you get uh, access for the impella, you pu you're putting in a, a 14 French peel away sheath, but the outer diameter on that 14 French sheath uh, is 17 French. And then when you take that out, you're introducing the repositioning sheath and so this is for the patients that need ongoing support after your PCI. Uh, putting in this repositioning sheath, uh, unfortunately, is not 17 French, like the hole you just made. And in a lot of patients, it's not a big deal because the, the artery will kind of uh, contract back or down on the sheath. But in a lot of our patients, they have you know, significant vascular disease, and that doesn't happen. So oozing uh, and frank bleeding even can be a bit of an issue. And so the way that we've kind of been taught to to manage this from our friends at Abumed is uh, to uh, you know make sure the repositioning sheets all the way in um, uh, to uh, suture the the um, uh, the sheath uh, proximal to the the little blue tabs so it kind of pulls that you know, repositioning sheath forward a and then uh, using gauze to kind of prop up the sheath to kind of maintain that uh, you know 35 to 45 a degree angle uh, that you use for your original access. Um, and, and oftentimes that will help, uh, but, but um, oozing continues to be a, a major issue. Uh, and so uh, some of the things that, that you know, I've tried over the years to manage this, uh, most of these haven't worked. Uh, one is manual pressure. Um, that uh, very rarely works. Sometimes it does, but it very rarely works. And you usually, if it works for a while, you end up being called in an hour because it's bleeding again. Um, the, the one thing that I have had a little bit of success with is tightening the pre-close, uh, uh, per-close sutures down. Uh, so you, you push the knot down. Um, sometimes you can just pull on the knot and it will go down, but oftentimes doing that, the knot actually isn't getting all the way down to the arteriotomy. So I will use um, the micropuncture sheath and kind of slide the the wire or the, the uh, suture through that micropuncture sheath. So then you can use that to kind of push it down uh, through um, through the track to get that knot all the way down to, to the uh, arteriotomy. The problem with this though, is that knot can loosen over time. And so you may have control initially, uh, but you know, six hours later, you could have an issue. Um, again, Jason, we've tried to put a, so we do something similar to that. We use the side port of a, a sheath and we lock the three-way stopcock to hold the knot down. We also, when you showed me this other thing, the micropuncture, we were using a hemostat on the micropuncture. We'd clamp down on it and we'd leave it in place and let that hold it down, but it still wasn't quite perfect. It still loosened yeah. sometimes. Did you guys yeah, ever- it, we, We've tried like that. that. We've tried that and it it, it, it can work. It, it, it leads, um, it's kind of bulky. And then you've got these, these um, three-way stopcocks and they're always pushing up against the patient's skin. And then, you know, it, it's a bit of a mess because if they do bleed and then your nurses are taking it out and they don't know what all these things are. And so you have to do a lot of education on the team to know what they're looking at when they see all this stuff there. Cause all of a sudden, you know, I've had cases where you come down and the next thing you know, your sutures are sitting uh, unexposed uh, uh, because they've undressed everything because they had to clean the patient. Um, so those, those, you can do those things, but again, it's just, it's, it's become a bit messy. Um, Agreed. You know, we do, we, we use the forward tension with the sutures and then adjust the impel angle. I've tried fem stops that doesn't work. Uh, and, and then I've tried mattress sutures and, Mattress sutures just make things look good on the outside, but they still bleed on the inside. And then the next thing you're dealing with is a large hematoma. So uh, so none of these are, are perfect. Probably the best is to tighten the perclose sutures, but um, but even that doesn't work in, in, in all cases. And so uh, my colleague, Ethan Korngold, uh, I should say my former colleague, he is now the chief medical officer at, uh, at Abbott. Um, uh, came up with a technique. He's a, he's a big structural guy, so, so very, very uh, competent in large bore access. 
and uh, came up with this idea of of uh, putting a uh, a second uh, per close on the basically on the outside of the um, of the impella to try to uh, manage and and decrease the size of that arteriotomy to manage the bleeding. And so uh, he he showed me what he did, and 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 then I've done it several times, and then and so we then wrote wrote up a a case report in J Sky, and this we'll kind of kind of walk you through the steps of this. That we did this on a little model. Uh, we don't have a video in a patient yet, but I did it on a model that kind of walks you through the steps. So the starting point, you've got an impella CP in with the uh, peel away sheath out and the repositioning sheath in, and you're having bleeding around it. Um, and this can be done. The nice thing about this is this can be done if they have pre-closed sutures or not. So, you know, occasionally we'll get patients shipped in from outside facilities who get an appella CP thrown in kind of urgently for a patient who's who's not doing well uh, and they don't get a pre-close in. And so then they get to, to our institution and we're, we're dealing with with bleeding. This is a great way to manage it um, if you don't have a suture in. Uh, so again, this can be done acutely at the time uh, that you notice bleeding in the cath lab, or it can be done uh, very easily down in the ICU if you have bleeding in the ICU, and it doesn't require an eruption of the impella support. Uh, so we we remove the stylet from the uh, impella side port, and we put in an 035 uh, J wire um, and advance that uh, into the aorta. Uh, at that point, you then uh, pull back the repositioning sheath out of the body. Uh, this has to be done with two people because when you do that, you're obviously gonna get a lot of bleeding. So you need to have somebody holding pressure over the groin uh, as you pull back the repositioning sheath. And then once the uh, repositioning sheath is out, you then grab the wire because the wire then is exposed because it's going through that, that uh, wire a repositioning port, and then you pull the back end of the J wire uh, out of the repositioning sheath so that now you've got uh, the J wire, the 035 wire, uh, alongside the impella shaft, kind of kind of aligned next to each other. Uh, we then, uh, over that wire, you deploy a perclose, uh, and we, we position it kind of uh, uh, at a noon position, a noon to six position. You know, a lot of times when we pre-close, we'll, we'll go 10 and two, this one needs to be straight up uh, uh, at noon to, to really try to avoid uh, uh, the, the needles from the perclose uh, hitting the impella shaft. Uh, we then uh, uh, deploy the perclose knot uh, and then tighten it. Uh, and we'll tighten it and cut it. Uh, uh, at that point, you've basically taken the arteriotomy and, and, and shrunk it in size. Uh, and, and at this point, you then readvance the repositioning sheath. Sometimes you'll feel a little bit of um, even a little bit of resistance uh, as it's going in, but you, we haven't had any issues with that. It tends to go in fairly, fairly easily, though. Uh, and then um, uh, uh, at that point, you, you in, the, in the handful of cases we've done now, you've usually got, uh, you know, a complete hemostasis. Obviously, as you're advancing uh, or removing the repositioning sheath, but also when you're advancing the repositioning sheath, got to be really careful that you're not moving the uh, impella shaft and that the, the impella is not moving uh, either out of the aorta or out of the ventricle or potentially being uh, pushed too far into the LV. This is a, a video that we made um, that kind of shows uh, uh, the steps. I'm going to demonstrate the side close technique. This is my partner, uh, Dr. Korngold. So the first thing you do is you take the stylet out of the wire repositioning port, put the wire in into the aorta and then again undo your protective sleeve walk back the repositioning sheath so that's out of the body and then the wire is exposed and again at this time when you're doing this you're having somebody maintain manual pressure over the groin and you're having somebody fix the impella shaft while you're doing these manipulations. Once the wire is free, you just pass the, uh, the per close through the arteriotomy, remove the wire, and then again, deploy the per close at, uh, at a 12 o'clock position. 
you can see those needles, how they come out, that if you're kind of off axis, you know, potentially you run the risk of, of interacting with the impella sheet. But I think that risk is really quite low uh, just because you've got the, the body of the perclose kind of will, will block it and the foot plate will probably block that. But I think it's probably just safest just to be real careful with this. And then again, we pull that down, tighten the knot. Once the knot's tightened, you've removed the sheath. Uh, and then lock it and then cut it. Now you're all set to re-advance the repositioning sheath. Again, somebody's still holding pressure over the groin and you're gonna uh, control the shaft of the impella so it doesn't move forward or backwards. You see there's a little bit of tension going in but really not a whole lot, should go relatively smoothly. Uh, and there you, you, you can see on that model how how snug that that hole is around the repositioning sheet and then you reintroduce the uh, protective sleeve and lock it so you know obviously there's possible complications with anything that we do uh, probably the biggest risk is just inner inadvertent movement of the impella uh, obviously you don't want to pull it across the uh, aortic valve in a patient who really needs the support uh, and you, you want to avoid uh, pushing it too far in, potentially even causing ventricular arrhythmias or even ventricular injury. Um, you know, potentially there's the risk that there's uh, iatrogenic uh, femoral artery stenosis or occlusion uh, by, by um, uh, uh, closing down that arteriotomy. If there's any concern of that, uh, you can always, once you put the repositioning sheath in, you can take a, uh, an angiogram uh, through the wire port of the repositioning sheath and make sure that you've got distal flow. Uh, th those would be things that you'd obviously want to pay very, very close attention to because, you know, dealing with an ischemic leg uh, is, is um, would always be a challenge and would need to be addressed promptly. Um, you know, there's always concern about injury to the femoral artery or, or failure to achieve uh, hemostasis. Um, you know, obviously we deal with a lot of patients that have peripheral vascular disease in addition to their coronary issues. And so heavily diseased or calcified or narrowed vessels may not be uh, as suited uh, for this technique. Uh, but again, our experience is, is, uh, is really new with this. Um, so um, so we, we really need to uh, have sites like Murmur that can kind of spread the word on this so other people can start using it so we can kind of gain some experience and know what's, what works, what doesn't work, and, and what other potential complications could, could arise. Um, there are obviously future directions about managing uh, sheath bleeding. Um, you know, some, some colleagues uh, will leave the peel away sheath in. Um, I think in somebody that you're really concerned about bleeding with, I think that's not unreasonable. I know in our institutions, uh, our, our nursing uh, uh, staff uh, raised quite a ruckus if we do that, but we try to explain to them the reasons for it if we ever have to. Uh, Abiumet has been working on a, a durable sheath instead of using the peel away. Um, but one of the concerns with this is, are we trading one problem for another? You know, trading the problem of some bleeding and oozing for, for uh, issues with ischemia with a larger sheath. Uh, with that, you're gonna have some dead space in the sheath that potentially runs the risk of having sheath thrombosis. Uh, and to combat that, you have to give hook it up to a pressure bag and potentially your, the patients are gonna be getting uh, uh, volume that, that you know, oftentimes these patients don't need. Um, obviously with this, we need a larger sample size and need more people to, uh, to try this and see, see what works and what doesn't work uh, so we can really understand the potential complications and or limitations of uh, site close. Well, I think this is awesome and I'm excited to, to try this. I've not done this yet. I only recently heard about it uh, from you guys. So we're going to definitely use this though because we we definitely get those same, we all get those pages an hour after you've done whatever it is that you yeah. did, whether it was tighten the per close or hold manual pressure for 10 minutes, as you said, which almost never works long term. Um, so this is a, it's a nice thing to be able to do. And especially if it gets people hemostasis, I mean, the bleeding from these can be not inconsequential over long periods of time, especially when it's yeah. in for days. Um, and with those really friable vessels in some of these vascular patients, uh, they really can have very poor recoil. So this is a really nice way for us to move move forward. So thank you and and, and thank Ethan uh, for coming up with this and giving us the opportunity to try it. And thank you for uh, coming today. Yeah, you bet, Chris. It's great joining you.